know if you're aware of this, but working in the entertainment field can be, well... Rough. Wonderful, but really hard. Ridiculous. I mean, I love it, but everything about it is appealing. Let's call it challenging. It's sometimes a long time between jobs. A long time. And if there's no work, there's no money. And no insurance. Not good. And then you get a job and everything changes. There's nothing better. Until your show closes. Or your TV show gets canceled. Or the dance company folds. Or you get injured. It's a lot. It's a great business, except when it's not. The good news is the Actors Fund. Oh my god, I love the Actors Fund. Now, the first thing you have to know is that it's not just for actors. Say it with me. It's not just for actors. It's not just for actors. If you work in film, television, or any of the performing arts, the Actors Fund is here for everyone in entertainment. Everyone. All of this is the Actors Fund. They understand how bananas this business is. Their programs are designed with entertainment professionals in mind. They get it. They are our safe place. Our safety net. And they are completely essential to our community. And not just for actors. The Actors Fund. For everyone. 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 Everyone in entertainment. Hello, my name is James Renault Iglehart, and welcome to the New Works Virtual Festival, a benefit for the Actors Fund. The Actors Fund is a 501 charitable organization that supports everyone involved in the entertainment industry. So, please make a donation if you can by texting 5678-GIVE to 56512 or go to theactorsfund.org slash NWVFest. We appreciate your support and now sit back and relax and enjoy the rest of the show. My name's Hope Villanueva and my play is the QOL Mandate and it tells the story of a mother and son uh, in a time when we have required boys to receive a vasectomy at puberty. Uh, this mother helped create the law, and when she breaks it, she's jailed, and her son tries to figure out what to do with his life, uh, including turning to the father he never really knew who lives in Mexico, in a country he's never been to, uh, in a culture he doesn't know at all. QOL Mandate, Scene 1A. As the audience settles in, young Mateo meanders, noodling around on a guitar. The space becomes cold. Off stage. Um, hi. I'm supposed to be on a list. I'm Sebastian Marquez, I'm, I'm here to see. Marquez. M A R Q. You want me to? No touching. You look so tired, Miko. Are you sleeping? I'm fine. It's not so bad, really. You should have gotten access to the bank. Did the lawyers call you? They know you're not quite 18 yet, but Bell said that it wouldn't be a problem. They won't tell me anything. We don't want you to worry. It's all so much, and I wanted to tell you myself. Then tell me. I just... There's crazy shit all over the news, and the reporters wait for me at the front of the school. This was never supposed to happen, mi amor. I had no idea. It was nobody's business but ours. Our business. And and how could I know that this would- well, Is it true? You always told me we were in this life together. So there's no way that the things people are saying can- Is it true? Mom, it, it's me. I have a right. I have a right. Yes. You broke the law. You made me. Am I a criminal now? No, no. But the law is the law. 
But it wasn't you. It was me. Th then it's... It's real, then? It's real. What is real? Or law? Or Mom! Right or wrong? Sebastian, mijo, please. Why would you? I... I... I, I couldn't... I found dad. I thought, I thought it would piss you off. So I didn't tell you, but I found him and we've been talking. I think that maybe, maybe I should go to him. Mexico? I don't know. I'll be back next week. Slamming door shoots Elena into another moment when everything was clearer to her. Before, Val, Elena's boss, is giving a press conference. I'm always honored to have the opportunity to share all of the exceptional work being done by the Committee for Reproductive Management. It's only with the support and emotional buy-in of the public at large that we've been able to make such strides. Since the invention of the pill in 1960, though really since it was legalized for all people in 1972. The burden of contraception has been borne by women. After decades of hormonal manipulation and unwanted side effects, the obvious solution was right in front of us. Vasectomy at puberty for all boys. A simple outpatient procedure creating a temporary and reversible situation that can prevent 100% of unplanned pregnancy for all our young people. With the support of women all over this country, right, left, religious, and non-secular, families came forward voluntarily to support the good of our nation's youth. <clears throat> women let their families be testing grounds. Voluntary vasectomies eliminated unwanted pregnancy in our test communities, but the second step was more important. Six and seven years later, some of these young men were newly married and wanted to start families. In this brief span of time, our reversal procedure has a 94% to success rate, allowing these adults to start families. <laughs> I couldn't be more pleased. We committed to this mandate for all our boys and the futures of ambitious young people have been protected. Families who have been struggling with poverty no longer have to fear added financial burden of unexpected child. Parents, parenthood is now truly a choice. This is the definition of the public good. This is for everyone. Scene 2A, past. It is como una Mariposa, vienes y te posas, vas de poco en poco, fácil y legal, te quiero, te provoco. Yo soy fantón de tus razones, trampa que no mata pero no olvida. Vivo, mercado, creciendo. Merposa, tres semanas. Todo de loda el viejo. Merposa, no regreso. A mí, Merposa, te amo. Mi fuerza, te amo. Yo no regreso contigo. Ay, Merposa, te amo. Mi fuerza, te amo. Now, the bonfire continues. Different teenagers, the same shadows. I'm like, Mom, I saw my birth certificate. She looked confused, like, so I, I, I say the last names were different. 
No. She turned green. I said the years didn't line up, and then she starts crying. Yeah, Carrie. I, I didn't mean to. I, I told her that, and not like I care. I would. Me too. Why? I don't know. It's like uh, part of who you are. <laughs> You're an idiot. Anyway, they weren't married yet, but they're going to be, and, and they're both still here and together and all, so who cares if they got pregnant before that? I wasn't a mistake like that, but she kept on crying, like bawling, right? I, I didn't know what to say. Tact is not your strong suit. I stand there a minute, right? Like, like, mom, I'm sorry you got knocked up. <laughs> Such an ass. I, but but kind of. She finally starts crying. I say, I'm sorry. And then she's so not sorry for having me. And I'm like, good. Poetry. A and you can do better? No need. Straight guys aren't supposed to have feelings. Painful, but true. Oh, yes? Oh, yeah. oh yeah. yeah, it's for you. The 1980s with like the chauvinism back. <laughs> <laughs> but Carrie, in the end? It's all fine. When she calmed down enough to figure out that I wasn't damaged or that she hadn't shamed me or something, it was fine. Everyone acts like an idiot teenager at some point, don't they? My parents were married for like three years before they had my older sister. Me, two years later. Nice and boring. That's so sad for them. So I make up for what they missed. <laughs> <laughs> you wish. <laughs> no, really. A, a little law change, a little snip here and snip there, and I can have as much sex as I want without any misfires. <laughs> right, babe? Oh, God. You're you're really cool with it? Why wouldn't I be? I don't know. Don't you feel kind of violated? Didn't it hurt? It's surgery. They knock you out. You're sore after. I hardly noticed. I took a little more dewy and thank your mom for me, Bastian. Oh, God. I don't ever want to think about my mom associated with your junk <laughs> ever. I question my judgment daily. I'd question it if you didn't. Uh, what about you, Bastion? Oh, I am absolutely an accident. But points to mom for honesty, though. I've, I've always thought so. Since I was old enough to get it, I did. You know, she talked all the shit about my father, and when I was little, I didn't understand. Your dad left us. Your dad was a raging jerk. Dad was some filthy Mexican. You shouldn't be saying filthy Mexican. You're Mexican. But mom says sometimes it applies, the stereotype. She said that he couldn't handle it. They tried for a while. They both finished high school. He got some shitty job at Denny's or IHOP or something so she could take some college classes. But the whole thing freaked him out and he bailed on us both. But she had me and I had her. Mom always said we were uno de ellos, one being. We had to be, so she tells me everything. That's sweet. Yeah, my mom's cool, I guess. I'll stick with her for a while. <laughs> Take a walk? Yeah. Okay. Don't leave without us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're a ride, dude. Uh, uh, 30 minutes tops. Yeah, I won't take him 15. I'm sure you can do better than 15 minutes. Oh, is that a dare? No. It's, it's totally there. No, I can. I, I'm sure. Yeah. Carrie leans in and kisses Sebastian. Sebastian and Carrie start making out, but... I, I'm sorry. No, you're fine. I, I felt you shudder. It's not like... Carrie starts to get up. Hey, w wait a minute. W we're drunk. It's weird and... No, I don't care. I, I shouldn't have. We've been friends for, for too long. No. To... Okay. I want, um, this is... Um, they're gonna be a while. Yeah. Sebastian kisses Carrie, and she kisses him back, and again. They'll be gone long enough. I hope so. They start making out and pulling on each other's clothes. Scene 3A, now. <clears throat> While is visiting Elena in jail, they are watched by the guard. I thought I'd at least have earned a hello or a thank you, something. 
I've done everything you asked for. I had the restraining order put in place. The press can't get within 50 yards of him. They can't come on your property or harass him at school. And I'm gonna help with the court related expenses. You know how hard it is to get things in motion when I'm not his legal guardian? I get it. This is, this is crap for you, for Sebastian. I, well, it's a PR nightmare. A PR? No, it's an actual disaster, but we can contain it. We can fix this. You're worried about the mandate. I'm worried about you. I've got my lawyer bending over backwards to... Tell me something. Anything. How did I end up here? It was the girl. She report. well, it wasn't her. She didn't. Her father reported Sebastian and then... Not that. After all these years, we worked and lobbied and, and got the mandate passed. I was in. I was totally in. You were my right hand. I was a believer, you know? After the Trump presidency and COVID-19, no one would agree on anything. And you came up with this and it brought us all together somehow. You were the prophet <laughs> and I followed. Then you tell me what went wrong. I, I don't. If you were so on board, did Sebastian talk you out of it? No. You're sitting there in that jumpsuit in here and you're a square. I'm not. You are I'm... a type A, a classic rule follower and you wrote my speeches. Helped me sell the quality of life mandate to the entire country. What? could possibly have been enough to make you break the law, this law of all things. You don't have kids. I'm your friend, I'm. It takes three visits, but I only had to take Sebastian to two of them. That first one is just paperwork. Then you bring them with you to get checked out to be sure they're healthy for the procedure. And then they talk the boys through what's going to happen. It's required informed consent. The law is written that way. Elena steps into her own past and sits beside Sebastian. Done? Yeah. Nervous? See, I'm not worried. The doctor isn't going to do anything today, you know? What are you going to start with tonight? Call of Duty and Resident Evil. Greg is really good at Resident Evil. Carrie's better Call of Duty. But is she better than Greg? At that one, yeah. Uh, you promise us hot dogs the way I like it with the black crispy bits? What's the point without the crispy bits? Yeah, oh, flan too. Oh, you have to make flan. Are you going to help me? It doesn't come out the same unless you help me with the caramel. Sebastian Marquez, we're ready for you. Now. Elena is slammed back into the present and Sebastian is gone. I had already decided by the way he looked at me that day in the clinic. Oh, that little boy was with brightness and options and a you future. Rules with me. Elena, what were you thinking? That I just couldn't take this from him. Uh, when are you going to talk to Sebastian next? Friday after school. He came, didn't he? Yes, but he's pretty upset with me. Can you ask him to eat something other than pizza? Okay. I don't have to remind him to do his homework. He's always responsible about that. But um, uh, ask him to keep the house from uh, getting too messy. But he eats like a, a teenage <laughs> boy. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs>
tell them to look in the fridge that we have all the stuff to make the flan. I mean, I can never get the caramel right without burning it. But Sebastian. Elena. You should try this flan. Scene 3C, before. Focus shifts to Sebastian at school who has just been found by Carrie. Your season is going straight down the shitter. Not your fault. Okay, uh, coach is watching your season go down the shitter. We're back tomorrow. What's the holdup? It's just a mess on the field. They had to drain a bunch of water. A week is a long time. Kind of, yeah. A, a, a weekend is a long time. I'm not used to not talking to you for that long. You could have called. You could have. Are we weird now? I mean, I. No, I don't. I don't want us to be weird. But are we? I, I don't. I don't want to be. Do we? Do we have to be? We've been friends since since fourth grade. You've never. Um, I've never. Before with that second. No, I wasn't trying to. Me neither. And and there was the fire and drinks. You're you. You're Sebastian, my Sebastian. You've you've always been my Sebastian. Um, you were there. I I felt I I, I wanted to. Yeah, me, me me too. I was I was a little caught off guard. Sorry. But but I I wanted to too. We're not dating or anything. No, uh, that, that would be weird. No, not that weird. But it, it was just what it is and, and and that's okay. I'm glad it was it was us, so we're fine. Yeah. I think so. I don't know if we should make it a habit. That could get Oh no, no, yeah, yeah, because cause we're not Right, right. Did you tell? Um, no, 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 not 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 really. Who? Greg. Oh, hold on. Will I will I blast it on Reddit? Uh, no. Damn, Bastion. Sorry, I just I. <laughs> uh, come hang this weekend. Okay. Yeah, I, I found something. I have to show someone. What is it? There's a video online. It feels kind of like a, a commercial, but I think it's more like an interview. So? My dad. I think it's my dad. Oh, uh, my mom. <laughs> Either day is good. Sunday afternoon? Yeah, yeah. Uh, see you. See you. Scene four. Past. Young Elena is reading a textbook and taking notes, focused. Nearby, Nana, Elena's mother, is working over a mixing bowl with a seven-year-old Sebastian. Keep stirring that, mijo. I'm gonna pour really slow. I am. And you have to keep stirring. I wanna pour. It's really hot, baby. I can do it. I'll teach you that part next year. I can do it now. Mama. Well, I can, I can, I can, I can, I can, I can. The qualify final is on Wednesday. Ay, mijo, vas a gritar las naranjas de las ramas y luego no tendremos ninguna. Thank you. I need you to stir these huevos, Sebastián. Okay. Listos? Uh, huevos. Eggs. Huevos. Eh. Sugar. Azúcar. Milk. Lu le, le, le. Leche, mijo. Leche. Bowl. Um. No sabes. Un tazón. What about spoon? Do you use them every day? No, Nana. Elena, have you been teaching him? Teaching him what? You need to be take, uh, talking to him in Spanish. Why? 
He needs it. Okay. Mama says that nobody uses Spanish at school and that it's not important. Elena Pilar Marquez. Wednesday, Mama. Did you really say that? It's true. Everyone I know speaks English. My job in class, his school is the same. The only person I use Spanish with is you. Our language is part of who we are. Debes enseñarle eso. Why is Nana mad? She's not. Keep stirring. Debes mostrarle quién es. De dónde es él. We're not in Mexico, mamá. Debes enseñarle quién es. We're American. Eso no es lo que está escrito en tu cara. Sebastian is right here. He doesn't understand anyways. Mamá. Tal vez es hora de que él aprenda. Baby, can you go find my keys? I think they're in the living room somewhere. Oh, I have to stir. It'll be fine. You want him to learn the hard way? That people are going to look at him and just see Brown? It isn't like that. He should learn it from you so you can explain it to him. To assume everyone is bad? He can't just trust. There are too many pendejos who don't see him with their hate and their guns when they see a brown young man. He's going to be fine. If you don't teach him the words of our language, how will he know? How will he know to hold his head high? No te enseñe estas cosas. I found them. Scene 5A, before. Have you called him yet? Le dejé un mensaje. You should try again. No quiero presionarlo. He reached out to you. He found you. He started the emails. ¿Qué importa? It's been months. He wants to talk to you. Él me envió esto. Dice que no les gusta que le tomen fotos, por eso no tiene muchas. Mira esa onda en su cabello, es igual que cuando era bebé y su sonrisa. ¿Cómo es que todavía me acuerdo de eso? Sigue siendo el mismo niño chiquito, pero diferente. That, my darling, is what happens when they grow up. The same with my nieces and nephews, there's no stopping it. ¿Qué pensaste de mí? No en el principio, sino cuando te dije de Sebastián y Elena. They're not a part of your life, so I don't see why. I mean, they, they weren't a part of your life then. There wasn't a reason for you to tell me about that at first. Sí, pero, pero ¿qué pensaste? I wasn't mad. ¿Te digo algo? Well, you were a kid who messed up. We were all stupid when we were 16 and... Bueno, ahí está. I think, I think I knew there was always going to be this chance that this boy and his mother could find their way back into your life. The odds were so small. I didn't think you had any plans to go back to America. No lo tuve, todavía no. No, that didn't make me... I never worried about Elena. But Sebastian is your son. There's not enough time or distance to undo that ever. And you shouldn't, you know? Fui un cobarde. I don't think so. No sabía lo que era ser un papá. No sabía lo que implicaba tener este tipo de responsabilidad. Y esas son excusas de mierda. Your whole family was coming back to Mexico City. You went with them. Solo mi hermana nació en Estados Unidos. Con todo lo que pasaba, el odio, mis papás ya se preocupaban. Luego mis abuelos se hicieron viejos, nos trajeron de vuelta a México. Then it wasn't up to you. Era ya un poco grande en ese entonces. Pude haber dicho que no. He has goofy ears like you. I'm not a mother. But I am a daughter. 
So all I can say about being a parent is that knowing that she's there is always more important than having any answers. ¿Y qué digo? ¿Qué es lo que va a necesitar? Answer that. You'll know what to do. Hello? Sebastián? Hey, what's wrong? Scene 5B, before. Val is continuing her press conference. With that, I'm going to open it up for a few questions. Uh, yes, there. Was unanimous consent required from both parents and the child before the procedures were performed? The law requires the permission of both legal guardians, yes. But what about the child? No, and that is the same as most medical procedures. Next question. Some circles are comparing the quality of life mandate to the one child policy in China, a law that people find more and more inhumane. That's a ridiculous comparison. Uh, even so, both laws take freedom of choice from the individual undergoing the procedure. Don't you find that problematic? Not at all, as vasectomies are reversible. Entirely different, and those women were already pregnant. The mandate's purpose is to prevent unwanted pregnancies in the first place. I'm sorry, but the reversals are not at 100% success. No medical procedure is 100%. Then how can we require that risk? And without the child's consent? There is parental consent. Is that enough? You're going to argue that this tiny risk, a nominal amount, isn't worth stopping teen pregnancy? Protecting millions of teenagers from stopping their futures in their tracks with an unwanted child, putting kids into the foster care system, abortion. Yes. We are out of time. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Scene six. Now. A clanging of a door shutting reveals the visitor's room. Val and Sebastian are both there, waiting. Can you just drop me off at home? Sure. Thanks. You don't need to go anywhere, stop anywhere, get anything? No, I'm okay. I've had enough cameras in my face for one day. Yeah, that was out of control. Aren't there rules or something? Since the case has societal ramifications beyond just your mom's case, the judge felt like she couldn't close the door to the press. People need to know what's happening. No such thing as privacy, I guess. <laughs> Not for you. Uh, thanks for that, being straight with me. Why wouldn't I be? Because I'm a kid. Maybe I can't handle the world the way it is. That doesn't make sense. Uh, people kind of think that. Well, they're morons. How are you supposed to learn to handle things if you never handle them? <laughs> At some point, you have to suck it up and do it. Even if you fall on your face. Well, we mostly fall on your face. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, lots of face planting right now. <laughs> yeah. So look, I'm glad we have a second because I got a request. Tonight, after you get home, make sure you can hear the kitchen door. I'll get this dry cleaned. It went well. I thought the legal team was happy. I wish you'd let me post bail. I'll never be able to pay you back. We don't have this kind of money. It's just money. <sighs> just take care of Sebastian. I'm fine. So what's next? I can't imagine the prosecutor's case will take more than a few days. It's straightforward. Law broken, done. Hey. It's not wrong. Then we'll get you on the stand. I guess on Wednesday, Thursday, and you tell them what happened. And they will decide what happens to me. Yes. How bad could this be? Truthfully. You helped me draft this all out. You have this brain for details, the way you tracked A to B to C and the importance of each piece. 
identification, tracking of individuals through the years, so we caught them in time, certification of the doctors and documentation. I, I didn't think of everything though. The rogue clinics, they popped up, the documents, forgeries looked real good. There will always be someone bending the law. As long as there's demand for it. Right, Mom? Yeah, that's how it happens. I know the state is already pressing charges against the clinic you used. I feel like a mob. Burdock wants to take the entire network of clinics associated with them. That man's a shark. He's the best. They're going to go big, is what I'm saying. You really think they'll go the maximum? Like 15 to 20 years? for this. We want to throw the book at the clinics, make an example of them. And you. 20 years. It's a lifetime. Even if that no, will appeal every step of the way. Well, maybe they should make an example of me. No. Mom. Do you remember when the president did all that border stuff, when they started imprisoning the refugees at the border? Of course. And I found Seb Sebastian crying. Do you remember that, Miho? Come on, you know. Tell her what you saw. It was just that, that picture. It was all over the news. The photo of the father and the daughter who were crossing the border. They found them face down in the shallow water. Their bodies. They didn't make it. That was terrible. And Sebastian was crying and crying. He was a little older then and he didn't like, he didn't like for me to see him cry. I kicked you out of my room. That's right, so I waited. And then when I came back later. Scene 6B, past. A door opens and Elena and Sebastian come out of the present and are in Sebastian's bedroom. Miho. Mom, sorry. It's okay. Your face is gonna stay that way. Mom. What's going on? Don't you have anything better to do than to stare at this? I'm paying attention to the world, even if it's terrible. But wallowing doesn't help anyone. Neither does putting my head in the sand. Someone did that to them. I think they were shot. Uh, I don't know. Who does that? I Put it away. <laughs> he was trying to get to his little girl. He was trying, sorry. He was trying to get his little girl to safety. And because they came from somewhere else, they, they weren't humans anymore because they're from someone else and they don't speak English and, and because the skin on their human bodies is dark. What kind of world is this? I would have done that for you. But it's so dangerous. Any parent would take any risk for their child. It sounds cheesy, but it's real. How bad must things have been where they came from? He brings her through the desert and across oceans, then this. Mom, how much of these parts are in me? Americans judge, and I know, I, I, I do it. On the way to school, we, we go past that stretch of farmland and sometimes I see the migrant workers in the field and I think, well, they must be them, dumb. Why, why would they take such a bad job for no money? Why aren't they smarter than that? Why aren't they working harder so they can do something better? Right as soon as I thought it, I knew it was wrong. But I did. That American in me judged. Would I shoot the man crossing the river if America told me to? No. How do you know? Because we're also the Hispanic family crossing the ocean. We're Mexican. We're like the Ecuadorians and the Venezuelans and all the other South Americans. We are crazy and determined and brave enough to run across the desert for a dream. 
And that's in you too. And dad, and you. Scene 6C. Now, Elena drifts back into the present, Sebastian following her. I looked at my boy right then, still not yet a man, but so beyond being a boy. And he had questions about everything. And the mandate, if I can't even buy the line I'm selling, but I did, I really did. Until suddenly I didn't. And, and you can't just decide that rules and laws don't matter. What kind of a society is that? Where everyone goes around doing whatever they wanted, even if other people get hurt. When one stupid, impulsive decision can turn someone's world upside down. I know that isn't the world I wanted to live in or what I wanted for my son. That was it. Was what? Exactly what you need to tell the jury when you're on the stand. It's not a performance. I know, and that's why it will work. But it doesn't change anything. They'll see. I you... still broke the law. Are they going to charge Sebastian? I don't think so. I guess technically they might be able to make a case for it, claim that he was old enough to know right from wrong, that he knew the law. No, but, but, but I, I didn't I didn't know that I hadn't. We know that. But I, I didn't know until Carrie turned up. They knocked him out. They left an incision. It sounds conniving, but I don't think they're going to. No one wants to punish a kid. Scene 7A, now. Sebastian arrives at home. Mateo? Uh, it, it's Sebastian, again. I saw your email. I saw mom today and it doesn't look good. I, I don't think that it's, um. I, I really like like to talk to you. Past, young Mateo enters the space and it becomes a library at school where he finds young Elena at a table. Young Elena seems to remember something and digs in her bag. Hola. Um, hola. Yo soy Elena. I'm here, uh, soy aquí por la tarea. Uh, <laughs> La trabajo por clase? I can't let you keep going like that. You. Are you even Mexican? Yes, I just. You should work on that thing. That's what I was embarrassing. And I hear your math scores are embarrassing. Shit. Sorry. You were being. Okay. Still, sorry. We can just do it. Huh? Uh, tutoring. Oh, uh, yeah. So it's geometry, right? Yeah. So uh, where are you right now? G geometry. Really? Yes. Have you paid any attention at all? It's so boring. You're doing it now. Geometry. Like right this second. That's geometry. It's nothing. This is triangles and parallelograms and opposite but equal angles. I love when girls talk dirty. Let's just Start at the beginning, okay? Yeah, okay. So uh, how many degrees are in a right angle? Nine. Right. A hundred 
eight? No. Uh, wait. Yes, yes. And what is an equilateral triangle? When all the sides are the same. So if all the sides are the same, we also know that all three angles in the equilateral triangle are also the same. Because of that, and because they have to add up to 180, you know that the angles of an equilateral triangle have to all be 60 degrees. Got it? Okay, so let's go back through it. Why is your ruler so weird? It's not. It is. <laughs> it's a scale ruler for architecture. Do you do architecture? No, I just thought it was interesting. Pay attention. Uh, do you know how to relax? Do you know how to work? Yeah, okay. Well, how do I know I have a right triangle? It has a 90 degree angle. And an isosceles triangle? Scene 7B, now. Hey, it, it's cold. Sebastian comes to the door. Uh, can I come in? Oh, uh, yeah. It, it's it's been too long. My my dad has me under freaking lock and key. You've been avoiding me at school. I, I had to. No, you didn't. Uh, not not because of you. The, the lawyers, they don't want me talking to you and compromising the case. You're my friend, you, you should have... Those crowds out there, out front, are, they're nuts. Well, how'd you get past them? The broken planks and the backyard fence, you never fixed them. Okay, well, mom's not handy like that. Neither are you. Here. Homework delivery, you didn't miss much. I'd rather have been in trig than in court. Yeah. yeah I can't wait until things get back to normal. I thought skipping school for the trial would be kind of awesome, but I am so bored. I'm happy to have homework to do. How's your mom? I kind of don't want to talk about that. Sorry. It's okay. Um, what can I do? Uh, you brought me my homework. Oh, no, for real. <laughs> Doritos for dinner? <laughs> Sue me. You could order a, a pizza or something. It's not important? No. It's okay if you need to answer the phone. No, like... really, it's... There. Mexico. So? Uh, did your dad... Um... Yeah. Kind of. Where is he? It's really nothing yet. Where is he? A town on the edge of Mexico City. He has a decorating business. Creating. Yeah, yeah, or designing, I guess, for, for bars and restaurants. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I, um, it's, it's, it's not what I pictured from what you said your, your mom, mom says. It wasn't nice. And I could hear the racism as, uh, that went through my head, so, wow was what I had right then to not sound like an ass. <laughs> oh, it's okay. I didn't know what to expect either. I, uh, I think you should call back, Bastion. Uh, I, I miss you. Yeah. Wow. What? Well, the right answer was I miss you too. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> Like, I don't want to make it not about you, because um, it is right now. Okay, now you're talking scary. I'm just going to, because cause you should you should know, you know, um, I already took care of everything. Rebecca was really great, actually. My mom wanted to take me, but that would have just made everything worse. So Rebecca drove me. Um, to point is I, I I went to the doctor and handle it I handled it so um, you don't need to worry about that 
part of all this, all right? Wait. <sighs> you know, I, I couldn't wait, Bastion, knowing that it was there in me, like a, like a parasite. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I couldn't wait for you, but you just, you should just know that it's over and then you don't need to worry about it. It's the best thing for us both. You know, maybe if we were older, um, God, what am I, what am I saying? Um, we're not even like, um, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go, um, you know, now, and that's that. Wait. <sighs> Please don't hate me. I, I couldn't. Don't hate me. Scene eight A, now. Uh, C. Hello. Uh, Sebastian. Este eres tú? Uh, who, who is this? Uh, lo siento, mijo. Uh, uh, me llamo Claudia. Um, I'm. I'm Claudia. That, that that still doesn't doesn't help. I was trying to call my dad. Oh, sí, sí. Um, this is him. Um, uh... <laughs> this is his teléfono. Mateo is mi esposo. I'm married to him. La oficina. It's around the hall. Oh, I, I can call back later. Don't, don't, don't bother him. At... No, no, no. No es una problema. <laughs> no, no, I'm... I, I don't know. You called us here. I, I know that. Your papa wants to. Él quiere ayudarte. He does. You should let me go get him. Um... It would make him happy. Yeah, yeah, uh, okay. Sebastian? Yeah. Mateo? That's me. I, uh, don't know what to call you. Me either. I used to say you were La Pequeña Oruga. Elena hated that. Why? I, I call her my butterfly, so you were my pequeña oruga. It means a little caterpillar. Yeah, it's not great. <laughs> I know. What do your amigos te llaman? Uh, do you have a nickname? Uh, most people call me Bastion, so you, you can call me that. How can I help? I want to, um, um, there's people who want me in jail too, but like mom, but I, I didn't do anything. I didn't, I didn't know. Of course. Of course. Would money help? And my best friend just told me that, that she, that she, it's too late now. It's all too late and, and it's fucked. Everything is just. Just, you could come. You could come here. Mexico, for a while, and when things get sorted out, you can go home. You shouldn't. That's not right for you to be in a house alone with no family. Yeah, I, I don't speak any. any but Spanish. you can learn if you want. Is there something else I can do? I I I don't know what else. Maybe. Uh, I'll, I'll think about it. All right. What does your mother say? She's in jail. Of course. I meant she's probably not happy that I'm talking to you. Sometimes you just have to be uncomfortable. Scene 8B. Past. Nana answers to reveal young Mateo. I, um... I don't think I should have come here. That was a question. I mean, I, I did 
come here. You're leaving. Your family is broken. My family is leaving, and I, I need to go with them. What could you possibly want now? You've done the damage. No puedes irte. Please, I just want to see Elena. No. For just a few minutes. ¿Por qué? Ya has hecho suficiente daño aquí, chico. Sebastian is my son. Tengo de hora a dispenme de... Arruinaste la vida de Elena. Le quitaste el futuro porque no podías guardarlo en tus pantalones. No es. Sí. Elena, has estado llorando por los últimos dos días. Because of you. Mamá, who's at the door? Ahora te ha escuchado. It's nobody, hija. I only need a minute, please. She is better than you. Ella siempre lo fue. Elena es inteligente y tiene objetivos. Sí, lo sé. Entonces vas y, y, y la golpeas. Todo lo que ella quiere es un millón veces más difícil gracias a ti. Ella, ella ama a ese bebé. She really loves him. But she would have loved him if he'd been born when she was 20 or 25 too. Entonces, pasaste. I don't know when I'll be back. I wanted to, and I know she's better than me. I couldn't go if I didn't think that. If I didn't know that Elena was going to give Sebastian everything in the world. And that she can do it better without me in her way. I think you know that. Alguien y a cuando yo no está tan enjado conmigo, el que la amo, lo amo a los dos. Ma, you all right? Of course. Were you studying? No, um, I'll get him. Make us some coffee. I'll get Sebastian. He's just fussing. Everyone says he's a good baby. It could be worse, right? It can always be worse. Sure. Uh, I was thinking, Mateo and his family, we can have them over for dinner to say goodbye before they go. The whole family. I, th I think we should do something for them. This isn't such a good idea. I mean, we have to see them. I need you. Me and Sebastian need to see him. I didn't even talk to him on the phone that day. I mean, you talked to his papa. You said that after we... They're already gone. He said it would be next week. They called while you were in class. They, they couldn't wait. And they Mateo? started driving today. And Mateo didn't say anything? Ya está hecho, mija. Th this isn't even about me. Mateo promised that he would be with us and love us forever. I mean, we knew this would be really hard, but he promised. Does Sebastian have a dad? And if, and what if he had stayed here? He's 17. You're 17. Almost 18. Without his family, how would he live? How, how would he support you? He has a job. He delivers Chinese takeout after school. And who makes the payments on, on the car he drives? Who pays for the insurance? He loves me. ¿Te puedes comer este amor? ¿Te vives solamente con amor? Do you want to get him? 
start the coffee. <clears throat> That's a good first thing to do. Then you'll figure out the next thing. Scene nine, before. Val is sitting, working on some research. Sorry. I told you it's fine. Still, when are you gonna get it? I'm never gonna be mad at you for actually being a mom. You get that done and then you come back here after, okay? Thanks. Bastion's okay? It's just the flu turning him into a cranky nine-year-old. <laughs> He's all doped up and tucked under a blanket at his Nana's house. You're not contagious, are you? I have an immune system of steel. Oh, good. I assume you haven't been on the social media while you were driving? Yeah, no. <laughs> Val shows Elena an internet exploding with news. The Wisconsin governor just signed an abortion ban after 20 weeks. He's obviously kowtowing to his conservative religious base and they're eating it up. And the women will be the ones who suffer. Any major responses yet? Planned Parenthood is mass emailing their supporters. Closures are expected as a result. Some of these states barely have any resources to begin with. People won't have anywhere to go. It's unacceptable. Well, what's our move? An intern pops in with a bag of Chinese food. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, uh, here's the... Um... Thanks, Elena, this is Tess. Uh, new, new intern, right, hi. Hello. Oh, no, no, you, you keep it. No, I, I should. You're running around like a crazy person, keeps the rest of us sane, so keep a few bucks. She's right. Get some caffeine for yourself. Thanks. So what's the next move? In the last few hours, this has started popping up from Twitter. Imagine that men's bodies were regulated by women and Facebook. Would you be saying the same things if women told you that you had to have a vasectomy? Okay, yeah. That's the move. What if, right? And the what if isn't crazy. The procedure has been around forever. It's reversible in many cases. What? Make men get snipped? If you can undo it, why not? Like all of them? This is a medical journal. That's where we start. We can't make a case for this if the science isn't sound. And you have to convince people who don't believe in science. No, I don't. Because this would eliminate abortion once and for all. Think of all the people this would protect. Hey, this is a good idea. In theory, I have a lot of questions. And this is why I need you. You bring me the questions so I can crush them. Okay, well, there are human rights concerns. I, I get it. That's why we need to be thorough. Our work needs to be watertight. I have to go down to printing. I need anything? Not right now. Test question for you. Sure. How old are you? 22. You have kids? <laughs> God, no, I'm a baby. Do you want any? I don't know. Maybe. Not now. And do you worry about accidents? I'm sure, but I'm on the pill and I am too busy to date anyone anyhow. So being able to choose when you have children is important to you. See, this sounds like an abortion argument. It's not though. You can't make sex illegal between young people. Human rights, right? You can teach them better. How often does that work? We should teach them better, but accidents. This is like the best seat belt ever. If a few people get bruised from seat belts, but it saves thousands of lives, it's worth it. If you could have decided not to have had Sebastian. I wouldn't do that. Okay, but if you could have had him a decade later, hmm? if you hadn't have, had to have juggled having a kid with college and grad school and interning, it would have been a lot easier. 
Yeah. It would have been. This is what I'm talking about. I need you on board. It's going to take years of legal research, writing briefs, the presentations. I, I can't rely on interns like Tess to take this to the finish line with me. I do my best work when I can bounce things off you. And first, we need the science on our side. Tess, I think we need more coffee when you have a minute. Scene 10A. Now, Sebastian watches TV where Val is giving a press conference. The fact is law is a law. In this case, a mandate that I nurtured and lifted into our consciousness as a possible solution to a societal ill. Laws have consequences. What are we if there are no consequences for the laws we break? Public documents state that your law firm is financing the legal counsel for the accused. Yes, that's correct. I'm sorry, but how do you justify to the people that you are helping defend the person who broke the law you created? She has a name. Her name is Elena Marquez, and her son's name is Sebastian, and he's a 17-year-old minor. They are human beings. Marquez, Ms. Marquez is a colleague and a friend of mine. Your friend broke your law. Yes. Then I don't understand why. Because she is still accused and not convicted. And because under the Sixth Amendment to the United States Constitution, Ms. Marquez has the right to the assistance of counsel. It is also my personal prerogative to spend my money to provide her the best counsel possible. This sounds like you circumnavigating your own law. On the contrary, I am ensuring the proper execution of justice. Does the DA plan to charge the son for the same crime? You can't hold him responsible for a decision he didn't make. There is no evidence he didn't know or even ask to have the surgery withheld. And remember, we don't have all the details at this point. Do we know when that determination will be made? You'll have to ask the DA's office. Is there any discussion about rewrite, rewriting the wording of the law following this case to include the child as eligible for criminal prosecution? My opinion is that it's very premature and aside from that, it's cruel. We include minors eligible in other cases where they are old enough to know the difference between right and wrong. If we're not requiring the consent of the child, then I don't believe that we can also hold them responsible for the violation of this law in a case where the mandate is broken. I understand the young woman in question will be taking the stand for the prosecution in the next day or so. Rumor has it that she has terminated the pregnancy. Do you have any comments? I won't speak to her situation other than to say that she shouldn't have to make that decision either way. This is precisely what the mandate is created to prevent. But she has a choice. Well, yes. Okay, that's all the questions for today. Thank you. Scene 10B, Sebastian flips channels. Hey, uh, Carrie, I- The number you have dialed has been disconnected and is no longer in service. Goodbye. Sebastian? Hello? How different is it there? In Mexico City? Uh, I don't know. Obviously, people speak Spanish. Yeah, and people eat a lot of tacos. Uh, not that much more than in California. I was kidding. Sorry. But, but what else? Like TV shows or, or video games? Well, people still play video games. It's all the same ones in the States. Mostly FIFA is popular, so is football. People take it pretty seriously. Claudia, my wife, she likes Chivas de Guadalajara. She's a little scary about it. Uh, does she play? Soccer or video games? Neither. Just a fan. Uh, uh, what's your team? Uh, Cruz Azul. They were my papa's team. We can see some games this summer. Uh, yeah, that, that sounds fun. Then yes. Yes what? I want to come stay with you. What does your mother say? It's not really up to her. Oh. And it won't be forever. I, I've only got a year of high school left until and then. 
you know, I'll go to college, I think. That's not very long. I, I just need to belong somewhere. La ciudad de México es hermosa. It's, it's beautiful here. It's like spring all the time. Well, that sounds good. But we can't... <laughs> Your mother needs to be okay with this. You, you'll talk to her. Can you talk to her? I don't think she will speak to me after all these years. And it is your decision. Scene 11A. Now, reporters outside the courtroom speak to their respective cameras. After nearly five hours of deliberation, they are breaking for the evening and will reconvene tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Expectation is that the jury will bring down a conviction. Without much doubt. And it broke the law. A law that was intended to help us all has destroyed a family. But it remains to be seen. But it remains to be seen how severe a punishment is handed down. One wonders what is going through the minds of the mother and son at the center of this case. Elena is exiting the courtroom with Val. Carrie comes down the hallway with her father. I talked to the judge. Carrie, stop. I did. We shouldn't be talking about this. Right? I don't care. Let's go. No. I want you to know, like, I, I know you messed up, but what happened with me, that's that's not what- that's enough, Carrie. Let's go home. Doesn't she deserve to know? Legally, the two of you shouldn't really be in the same room. This is a hallway. Can I walk down a hallway? Carrie. Stupid reporters are just parroting my parents and blaming Sebastian. I I'm supposedly the, the victim. You are. That boy took advantage. Hey! I kissed him, okay? We did that together. It takes two people to screw. You all know that, right? This was you. You and mom. They can't handle that. Like, you can't control everything. And sometimes shit happens. And this time, shit happened to me because I did a thing, a, a thing that I wanted to do and, and he wanted to do. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, now. He didn't know about it when we. No um, one's blaming you. It's not his fault. And no one should be going to jail for anything that we did. He's. He's my best friend. Best ever. You're his best friend too. You have to protect him from that. I'm trying. Good. Okay, good. I am... Uh, I'm sorry about this. All this. Come on, Gary. You okay? Nothing has been okay for a very long time. Scene 11B. Sebastian appears elsewhere, packing a suitcase. I hate this so much. Not that I'm in a hurry to go to jail. I've never understood how you handle those crowds. Sucks, it always sucks. I've just gotten better at ignoring how much. It was easier when you were writing my content. Oh, shut up. You thought of everything. I felt prepped, like I was wrapped in armor after I'd gone through your briefings. Well, you've got tests now. Half as good as you in the next five years, I'll be lucky. We're a good team. You know, you could have stuck up for yourself before when you started thinking that. And before you decided about Sebastian, you should have said something. No, I couldn't have. I wouldn't have been mad. <sighs> okay, I would have been pissed, but it would only have been for a minute. How was I supposed to? That's your job. <laughs> but you're my boss. You're my friend. You're supposed <laughs> to call me out when you think I'm full of shit. But I don't. Don't laugh. I mean, you are, but not about this. It's a really good idea. Hey, stop doing that. What? Pretending like you believed in me, me and the mandate. I did. Bell. 
It all made sense and you really thought it through. I was with you the entire way, even when I, I, when I couldn't go through with it. That had nothing to do with you or us. I made a choice for my family. It's a choice. It looks like it's not working out very well for me right now, but God, I, I always believed in you. It doesn't look like I'm gonna be able to get you out of this. I know. I believe in you anyway. Scene 11b, Sebastian finishes his packing. Simultaneously, Matteo is making a video message for his son. It's very early, so I hope that you're still sleeping. Oh, maybe you had to get up early to get on the train. Well, I wanted to touch base and confirm that I'll, I'll be at the border crossing to pick you up. The drive isn't too bad if the weather holds. We can leave the windows rolled down. I've taken some time off from work. Claudia is so happy you'll be spending some time with us. She's already planning beach trips and hikes. She wants us to do El Teposteco. I think it's too hard, but there is an Aztec ruin at the top and well, Claudia doesn't take no once she set her mind onto something. Elena appears again in prison garb. I know this isn't how you wanted things to be. And I am sorry for what is happening to your mother. I'm not sure what to say about all that, only that I'm sorry. Young Elena and young Mateo enter to observe. She and I are both a long distance from the boy and girl in high school. I miss them sometimes, the innocence. Now, at the border. Passport. Name. Sebastian Marquez. City of residence. Los Angeles. Your reason for traveling to Mexico? Uh, to see my father. I'm going to stay with him for a while. A visit. Sort of. I'm just... Enjoy your trip, senor. Sebastian steps through. Oh, we made up the spare bedroom for you, and I wanted to show you. The bed has barely been used. We cleaned and painted in blue. The new layer of finish on the floor is still smells some, so I'm sorry about that. But that corner of the house, when you open the windows, there is a breeze off the hills. On Saturdays, I can hear the abuela who lives up the street singing alone with her old records. Oh, I picked up a PlayStation and some games too. And I bought a map of California and had it framed. It's from the 1800s. Back then, California and Mexico were one. You can put it where you want to remind you where you came from. I hope this can become your home and, and that I can be a part of it. I'll see you soon. A car carefully pulls up. A mi esposa te amo, mi esposa te amo. Ya no regreso contigo. Vuela, amor. Vuela, dolor. Sebastián. Yeah. How okay. was your trip? Did you have any issues crossing? I'm here. Are you ready to go, son? Cell phone lights pop bright one by one on Elena alone. They turn off all at once. End of play. Artists are very special people. We join together to support and contribute to a moral of a story. Anybody who is like inflamed, you see like the, that sparkle of an idea in them about wanting to do this. It's like, how much, how high? What do you want, what do you want from me? <laughs> that people are coming up with stories now that are, that are trying to uh, process all of these strange and horrific things that have been happening in America in these last few years. It is the beginning of helping us to process this 
and learn from our mistakes. It's extraordinary. Under normal circumstances, a life in art and theater is hard. I mean, this is real help. This is substantial support when you need it most in a fast way and very simply done. My God, can you imagine how many people who are now losing their health insurance in the time of this uh, pandemic? The situation is dire. Theater professionals will be needing help by the hordes, and that's just the reality. And now is the time to really step up. I know this will be done soon, but um, it's a very scary time. And uh, it's, it's the time to step up and step up in a big way, almost more than we have ever before. So I would encourage everybody to give what they can and know that this is the time to do more than you think you can. so much for tuning in. Please don't forget to donate to the Actors Fund. The information is below and stay tuned tomorrow. Same time, same place here at the New Works Virtual Festival. Have a great night.